Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another Genshin Impact playthrough session. At long last, it has been nearly two years since miHoYo has given or HoYoVerse has given a dedicated story quest, event quest focused on my favorite character in all of Genshin Impact, my boy Razor. I'm very happy to announce that the long wait is finally over. Today starts my journey into 3.1 content and I am going to be jumping first, not into the Sumeru Desert, but rather the Mondstadt Festival of Ballads and Brews, which seemingly focuses on Razor as a character, his past, potentially his parents, his involvement involvement with other characters like Grandmaster Varka who taught him how to use his claymore and just kind of like the origins of Razor I hope is what this is developing into it also has it also has other characters that focus on like Razor's development like Lisa, Klee, probably Albedo's going to be in there too, Bennett and you know all the characters that have interacted with Razor over the course of the game and uh, I'm super excited to learn about that. I'm super excited to learn about like or just hear more about Grandmaster Varka who has been probably my most anticipated character. We are going to be jumping into Act Act one and act two of that content now act three doesn't come out for a couple of days so before any of that we have to commemorate another character entering the pearly gates not the pearly gates i shouldn't say i should say another character entering the promised lands if you will sino is the next character in my roster of characters that i am going to be officially getting to triple crown status. I don't really know much about his character. I know that he's very like strict when it comes to his duties as the general Mahamatra, kind of like the protector, the enforcer of ethics when it comes to the academia and the usage and passage of knowledge. I know that he's got like a super strict business side to him of getting the job done, but also a kind of like a, like a dad vibe, like the bad dad jokes and things of that nature. So I, I kind of hope that there's a delicate balance to his character once we get into the Archon quest and and once we get into his story quest but strictly from a gameplay perspective he reminds me so much of razor that i feel like it's impossible for me to just not gravitate towards him he's electro like razor he has a similar elemental burst like razor kind of looks like razor as well we threw out a crack theory that like if razor was from sumeru and lisa who taught razor how to use his vision found Razor in Sumeru while she was studying at the academia back in the day and brought him back to Mondstadt and then her and fucking Varka like raised him. Technically, he could potentially be related. I don't fucking know. Razor's constellation is Lupus Minor. Sino's constellation is Lupus Aureus. So they're both kind of like in the wolf family, if you will. With all of that said, though, very excited to be triple crowning yet another character. One, two, there you go. Triple crown Sino. He's already uh, level 90, friendship level six. He's gonna hit friendship seven today. C2, triple crowned along with all of the other characters that I hold near and dear. He is my most recent triple crown. Razor was my first triple crown. So I feel like they're on opposite ends of the spectrum. Which I, I don't know, I think that's kind of cool. Very happy about that. Another thing really quick, I did get a name card off stream. This one was super easy though. You just have to do like a bunch of uh, challenges with a group of bosses in the game. So we got another name card added to the collection mirror dreams a millennium of obsession and tragic yearning has long been lost in the sandstorms of those blazing nights but the eternal verdant oasis of her dream is in all likelihood as tender as it was at the first i know nothing about the desert i have not started the act three archon quest yet i know nothing about i haven't read any lore in the game i know very little about the scarlet king the goddess of flowers greater lord ruka devada i don't know if the her they're referring to is the goddess of flowers or greater lord ruka devada that image is of like the desert mechanism and the desert civilization is the dominion of the scarlet king so obsession and tragic yearning implies that like maybe he became like sad and obsessed over for the loss of one of the female archons again i don't know if he's talking about greater lord ruka devada or the goddess of flowers you know the tragic yearning makes sense if they were all friends and one of them dies and then he kind of like goes crazy of like oh man like you know i just lost my fucking friend or maybe it was even more personal maybe like he had feelings for one of them another a situation yeah like that's kind of what i'm thinking about like it's very similar i think i mentioned that too when i found out that there were three gods that like coexisted in the region of sumeru right the god of the death 
desert, the god of the forest, the god of the flowers, and then tragedy struck. We know that the Scarlet King's been dead for a while. I don't know the sequence of events that like who died in what order, but if I had to guess, I would say goddess of flowers died first, then the Scarlet King died, then greater Lord Rukudvada died or disappeared. If that is actually Nahida with some like R&R, &R. like we speculated too that like if greater Lord Rukudvada is the mother of the r and -R, then it would be likely to assume that similar to how when the r and -R use like their like big Arabalika magic, they lose their memories. The only thing I could think of is like Nahida. If Nahida is greater Lord Rukudvada and she used her powers at Conria, it would cause her to lose her memories and like forget who she was. And Arama also mentioned the story of like the Sealy was like they were this powerful being and they reverted almost kind of like Gwoba. So I don't know if that's just a trend amongst gods, like where if they use their powers, they change their form, they lose their powers. And if Nahida is like a mini version of what she used to be. So we have to talk to Mondstadt Catherine to trigger the event. However, I was informed by my mods that there are some new voice lines from some Mondstadt characters that I'm going to check out beforehand. They probably talk about either Razor or points of interest throughout this uh, Mondstadt wine festival. So I believe it's from Amber, Jean, Lisa, Kaya, and Eula. Oh, it's Mika. Oh, the new character, the new Mondstadt character. He's like part of the reconnaissance company. So Eula must know him because she's captain of the reconnaissance. Holy moly. Oh, Mika's a veteran of Eula's team. Yeah, exactly. When he first arrived, it was always, yes, commander, every time he spoke to me. I guess it must have been because he saw how close I was with Eula. Aww. But then, even after I told him I was actually an outrider, he still called me ma'am. It was so embarrassing. Hmm. We have completely different responsibilities after all. I definitely could never match his expertise in cartography. Ah, so that's what he does. I was thinking, like, he comes off as a very timid, like, afraid of my own shadow kind of vibe. He's respectful, you know what I mean? Like, he's just a, you know, he's just a wholesome little kid or whatever. But, like, the way that he talked when he was addressing Varka's letter just gave off the vibe that he's just a very timid individual. So I was like, how the hell are you in a reconnaissance company? That's kind of, like, covert, behind enemy lines type work. Every time we get a new edition of the, like, the Tevat map, that's basically what he's doing. He's filling us in. Let's see what Jean has to say. The Grand Master placed Mika on the front line of the expedition team, not simply because oh my the God. of the mission. More importantly, he was impressed by Mika's hardworking and grounded nature. From my own perspective, I feel very honored to work with someone like him. Holy shit, yo, that's goaded. Mika's on the front lines, like Grandmaster Varka vouched for this kid. I'm interested now. I'm actually super excited for this guy to come out. All right, what does she have to say about him? I do rather envy Huffman for having such a caring Fuck little brother. Mika takes wait, care wait, wait. of- Mika's Huffman's little brother? I do rather envy Huffman for having such a caring little brother. Mika takes care of everything around the house oh. and even looks after him when he's drunk. Oh boy. <sighs> How nice it must be to lounge around all day without a care in the world. Hmm? What do you mean I already do that? You're getting quite bold these days, aren't you, cutie? Mm. I wonder what it's like to have Huffman as a bro as an older brother, dude. Mika takes care of everything around the house, even looking after him when he's drunk. Like, come on, bro. You're an older brother. Like, what the fuck? Why is your younger brother taking care of you? That's some bullshit. That's why I said at the beginning, fuck Huffman, dude. He's such a shitty knight. When I first met Mika, he seemed like the nervous type, so I decided to joke around with him a little. Oh, come on, bro. I didn't count on that making him even more nervous. <sighs> His smile looked as if it were plastered onto his face. And in the end, he even wrote me a letter of apology. What? Does taking everything so seriously run in the Schmidt's blood? Is that his family? Mika Schmitz? But he was like, yo, he's already scared and nervous. So let me, let me have a little tomfoolery with the kid. And then it just made it worse. Like, come on, Kaya. When Mika was assigned to the reconnaissance company, I thought he'd only last a few days, just uh. like the others before him. But he surprised Let's me. Let's go. He never made a peep, but he completed all of his tasks quite admirably. He even volunteered to run errands for me and Aww. assist with communication. <laughs> 
I don't know who is going around telling people that I need looking after. I think I'm gonna like Mika a lot. I like that kind of character, like the, you know, the scrappy character that you think can't really hold his own, but like when it comes time to prove yourself, like that's what he does. Like he actually like follows through with his uh with his objective. I really think I'm gonna like Mika now after learning about him. All things are done and out of the way. So we are officially starting of ballads and brews. We're gonna be starting with Act One. Sounds from afar. As the harvest season arrives, the Mondstadt Adventurer's Guild has received a number of requests from the citizenry. You and Paimon have also arrived back in the city in response to Catherine's call for aid. What's going on, Catherine? Walk with me, talk with me. Let me just confirm. Yes, all tasks on the checklist are complete. Traveler, Paimon, we are grateful for your assistance. Hell yeah, nice to see you again. Thank goodness you were able to come as soon as we contacted you. Who knows how we would have coped with all these commissions otherwise. I was nothing. The last couple of days have been pretty busy, but it was all super easy stuff, like delivering and escorting goods. <laughs> you know, just another daily commission. When we heard that you were short on people, we thought we were going to be in for another long and drawn out adventure. Being the seasoned adventurers that you are, it's true that you are suited to work of a much higher caliber than your recent assignments. However, this situation is unavoidable in Mondstadt at this time of year. We're out here making wine? Huh? Why is that? Probably because it's harvest season. That's right. This is the ideal season for harvesting crops and fruits. And for the wine capital of Tavat, it's also the all-important winemaking season. Deluxe in full swing right now. Farmers are anxious to sell off their fresh produce, and all the major wine merchants are seeking to purchase top quality ingredients to make new product. Ooh, that means we're probably gonna see Diluc then. This is Diluc's like busy season for business, so we're probably gonna go to Dawn Winery. Ah, well no wonder we keep hearing people talking about wine these days. We're also in Mondstadt, so. Huh? What do you mean? Seriously? Yes, I swear I'm not making this up. The acting grandmaster wants everyone to gather at headquarters in the main hall. Hurry! Mm. We need to leave right now or we'll be late! Yeah, so Mika's there with a uh, Grandmaster Varka letter. Hey! Wait up! Uh, why do those- Oh, shit! Clustered. Watch out! Behind you! <laughs> Someone hit the report button! Well, hello there. If it isn't the Traveler and Paimon. Oh, boy. What a rare pleasure. Kaya! Just the person we need! Um, why is everyone running off to the Knights of Favonius headquarters all of a sudden? And is our help required too? I mean, we're, te we're technically the honorary knight, so we can probably go. <laughs> Don't worry. This isn't one of those occasions where you need to come to everyone's rescue. All that's happened is that the Knights of Favonius have just received a letter from the Grand Master. Let's go! Acting Grand Master Jean will be convening a meeting in the main hall shortly to go through it. It's so weird to hear Grandmaster, like acting Grandmaster. I've heard that for so long that I feel like that's the official title now. <sighs> well, that's a relief. Wait, hold on a second. What did you say again? The Knights of Ravonius received a letter from the Grandmaster? Nani? The Grandmaster of the Knights of Ravonius? I know, right? That's... Isn't that Varka? The leader of that legendary expedition? Yeah, that left two years ago and hasn't said a word since. Yep, the same one. So, what did Varka say in the letter? How's the expedition going? When are they getting back? What the hell are these shots on Paimon? That's like super dramatic effect right there. Oh, so interested in our Grand Master all of a sudden? I was always interested. Never knew you were such a gossip. All right, I was always interested. You guys have been holding out for two goddamn years. And you forgot about Mondstadt. It's only isn't it? That you'd be curious too if there was someone you'd heard loads about but never met. Yep, that's about he right. Gene <laughs> says he's a living legend. Oh, pretty hard not to get hyped up after hearing that. Besides, the expedition has been going on for ages and we still never heard a single thing about what they're up to. <laughs> The acting Grandmaster is very gracious in her appraisal. Varka brought quite a bit of trouble to those around him on the road to becoming a legend. <laughs> I'm sure. I'll have to tell you about it sometime. Bro, if they just explain where his expedition went, I will be satisfied. I don't expect to see him anytime soon, but like, the fact that we don't even know where he went, like, infuriates me. Anyway, since this has piqued your interest, why don't you join me at headquarters? And we'll see what the letter says. Let's go. We do miss our honorary knight, after all. 
Hmm. It's been quite a long time since your last visit. Uh, blame your creators. Sure. Let's go and see what it's all about. Bye, Catherine. See you soon. Yeah, we'll see you in the next Art Conquest very shortly. All right. Take care now. Oh, boy. Sounds from afar. I'm also wondering if all of the Catherines are connected. If the Catherine in Sumeru is about to get fucking stabbed through the back by like some crazy ass freaking mercenaries. I wonder if that's gonna affect any of the other Catherines in the other nations if they all have like this hive mind mentality. Oh. Hello. Oh, are these all like recruits? Hmm. It looks like just about everyone's here. Hey there, cutie. Paimon. Wow, everyone's here. Would be coming. So you heard about the letter? God, man, it's been so long. I was like, holy shit, Lisa, is that you? Yep, we ran into Kaya near the Adventurers Guild. The rose she has in her hair, now that we've been to Sumeru, I know it probably isn't it, but it looks like a Sumeru rose. Oh, wow, Paimon's never seen so many people in the main hall at once before. Oh, Paimon's getting kind of nervous now. <laughs> Don't get too carried away, all right? If I know the Grand Master, the fact that he has the time to be writing letters means it's probably nothing serious. It certainly won't hmm. be bad news. If this is about Razor, then I'm like, why was it so important for him to stop everything to mention that now of all times, you know? Unless it's like Razor's birthday or something and he's not here to be with Razor during it. So he's like, hey, people that are close to Razor, can you show him some like extra attention during this time or something like that? I don't know. Kaya's exaggerating a little, but otherwise I agree. After all, Mika's not the kind of person who'd be able to keep it hidden if something were the matter. Hmm. The truth would be written all over his face. Mika, who's that? Over there. Look. The kid standing next to Jean in front of the staircase. <laughs> oh my god, I love his getup. He looks so different and unique. Also, I've seen so many freaking comparisons of him to like a chocobo, and uh, I can't unsee it now, so that there's that too. He used to be a land surveyor in Eula's team. He's very talented in what he does, and a very reliable person. When the expedition team set out, the Grand Master appointed him to be the core member of the frontline team. Yo, Varka literally took all of the best knights, bro. Like, what the hell? He's the one that brought back the letter. Please, may I have your attention, everyone? <laughs> Now that we're all here, let's begin reading out the letter from the Grand Master. You know what would be really funny? They come back here and he's like, uh, attention Knights of Favonius, we are missing one of our members, uh, fucking Godwin. He's gone missing from the expedition for about two years, we can't find him. He's been in the fields for the last two years looking for his wife's fucking, like, wedding ring or some shit. <clears throat> Mika, please, go ahead. Y Yes, Master Jean. God, I love his design. I love the yellow, the blue. Those colors go really well together. Uh, right. <laughs> <clears throat> Hello, everybody. I am Mika, surveyor of the Reconnaissance Company. Uh, recently, I have been taking part in an assignment with <gasps> the expedition team. I will now be reading Grandmaster Varka's letter allowed for you all. Is that Ellen? Is this Ellen right here? Did she become a knight? Actual character progression with an NPC. <clears throat> that looks like her. Of Favonius. Greetings, everyone. This is Varka. The first thing I want to say to you all is please put your minds at ease. The expedition is safe and all of its Members are accounted for. All right, that last line is actual cap, bro. <laughs> they literally forgot Godwin, bro. He's literally in the fields. What do you mean all our members are accounted for, my dude? Oh, that's fantastic news. Sheesh. <sighs> My palms are sweating. Knees weak, arms are heavy. There's vomit on his sweater already. Mom spaghetti. <laughs> um, may I continue? Go ahead, yes, go Mika. on, go on. Sorry. Just having a little having a little fun time here. All right. Now that your fears are allayed, I trust you'll be ready to listen to the rest <gasps> of my letter. North? I'm writing to you from the northernmost reaches of Tevat by the light of a stove. <gasps> the expedition forces are stationed here while we restock. Are they going to Snezhnaya? That might be Snezhnaya, actually. What the fuck are they going there for? Why did he decide to go there when Snezhnaya brought envoys to Mondstadt during Act 1? That doesn't make... I don't know what that's all about. I once told you 
that the purpose of this expedition was related to a dangerous secret from days long past. Uh oh. I am still unable to disclose more than this, but suffice to say that you needn't worry about how our mission is progressing. Uh oh. Did the Saritza contact the fucking Grandmaster? Let's see, let's go down the list. Uh, Conria's destruction, before sun and moon, the calamity, all three of those things potentially. I think it might be Conria actually, because that's more recent. In the past couple of months, Mo we received an unexpected visitor. The Fatui Harbinger known as <laughs> the Captain. Oh my God! Capitano is my favorite Harbinger, bro. Oh my God! They finally dropped him in the plot and he was probably relaying a message to Grandmaster Varka on behalf of the Saritza, which led the expedition there. I don't know if the Saritza is trying to create like an army from different parts of, like she has like Mondstadt people are going there to help, Liyue, Sumeru, Fontaine, etc., etc. Maybe like a little bit of each region to contribute. Uh the captain? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, you don't know him yet. You will. I am fully aware of the Fatui's outrageous actions in Mondstadt in recent history. Yeah. Nevertheless, the captain was not <sighs> hostile towards us on this occasion. He's not hostile yet, but like he's still a Fatui harbinger. At the end of the day, they're trying to get what they're trying to get. They already have the gnosis of this region. So what, what more would they need from the knights than that? Open parenthesis. I rather suspect that's because this time, Snezhnaya and we are in the same boat. Close parenthesis. This could be like a Celestia thing, like we're all in the same boat, like the enemy of my enemy is my friend kind of thing, maybe? The man hides everything under the mask he wears, so no one can know his past or his origins. Fuck, man. However, one thing is for sure. He is as hard as iron for having the courage to challenge <laughs> gods as an ordinary mortal. My speculation now that it's either Imunlauka or it's someone that died in the 500 year calamity from Mondstadt. I don't doubt that he could even take out a ruin guard by stabbing it in its big glowing <laughs> eye with one of Klee's crayons. <laughs> Open parenthesis, don't get any ideas. <laughs> Close parenthesis. <laughs> oh, I love Marka. He's got a sense of humor. God, I love him. Our scouts have confirmed that the captain <gasps> received orders to head for Natlon three days ago. We'll be able to sleep much better now that we don't need to worry about him anymore. You're telling me I'm not getting Capitano for two fucking years? On the flip side, that is the region where the God of War is. And if there's gonna be fighting anywhere, it's probably gonna be there. So low key, I'm kind of excited to see Capitano pop off if, if he becomes like the antagonist of that region, so. I will admit that some of his actions have helped us, but even mm. then he owed us at least that much. He decides to help out the Mondstadt Knights of Favonius and the Grand Master, and then he books it after that. This year's Vineleza Fest must be kicking off in Mondstadt any day now. What a great pity that this year, once again, we will be unable to spend the festival together. Yeah, this year, last year, the year before that, just keeps going. Everyone here is always thinking back fondly upon the fine wines of Mondstadt, mm. as well as the happy times we have spent with each and every one of you. I hope that you and all the citizens of Mondstadt enjoy the festival to the fullest. Aww. Have a few drinks on our behalf. Let's go! The Dawn Winery's <laughs> limited edition Vine Laser Fest seasonal special Yo! will do nicely. Yo, uh, event item perhaps? May Lord Barbados Bless Mondstadt, and may the wind carry our sentiments back to your side. Varka. I love him so much, bro. I can't, that hyped me up for him even more. I cannot wait for him to be back. I don't even know if he'll be back. We might not see Varka until we get to Snezhnaya and fucking catch up with him all these years later. Like, what? P.S. If you're wondering who's tougher between me <laughs> and the captain, well, I'm the Grand Master. There are 10 captains in the Knights of Favonius. Okay. But only one Grand Master. Ah, ha, 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 ha. His left, not mine. Oh, I love 
Dude, I love him. He's so funny. Dude, he's got a great personality. He's got a good sense of humor. He's such a joker. He's like, his laugh, not mine, by the way. Yeah, he's like, this guy's the captain. There are 10 other captains in the Knights of Favonius, but only one of me. So don't forget who's stronger. The letter ends here. Thank you everyone for your attention <laughs> i also love how mika's not entertaining any of this he's like uh by the way this is his idea I'm, I'm just here reading what he said don't don't shoot the messenger thank you mika i like his delivery too he's uh he's nice i like him master gene um i just noticed that there's something else written on the back of the last page oh <clears throat> pps <laughs> i ran out of paper so I'll add this here. Uh. Lisa, the following is a message for you. Oh! Uh, oh. Uh, this part seems to be from the Grand Master to Miss Lisa. We are the mother and father who raised Razor. It's up to us to make sure he's okay. Oh, for me? Oh my God. Uh, seeing that it's a special message, Lisa, we'll discuss this in private. Okay. Everyone, as the Grand Master mentioned in his letter, the Vine Lisa Fest is in just a few days. And how fortunate we are at this time to receive word that all is well with the expedition. Though they are unable to return to Mondstadt and spend the festival with us, mm. the Vine Lisa Fest will nonetheless be a major event that all of Mondstadt is looking forward to. Where's Ludi Harpastum, goddammit? I hope that everyone will guard your <laughs> stations and perform your duties, both for our far-flung colleagues involved in the expedition and also for the hardworking people of Mondstadt. And of course, during your time off, I hope you will be able to rest, relax, hmm. and enjoy this long-awaited festival. God, I love Mika's design. He looks like a four-star, unfortunately. Like, not unfortunately. I still think he could potentially, like, be a good character. I don't know what type of character he's going to be. As most of you guys know, I level up and use more four-stars than I do five-stars. So he could definitely be in that roster. And you can see his vision on his glove there for confirmation. He's cryo. That brings our meeting to a close. Dismissed. Did Paimon hear that right? They ran into the Fatui's captain? Mm-hmm. Who knows what that was about, but it must have been important. Dude, oh my god, oh captain, my captain. I Apparently, I guess I'll see him in two years, unfortunately. But, uh, Fatui Shmatui, the real big deal here is the Vine Lisa Fest. Sounds like there'll be loads of free food and drink. Paimon wants to hear more. Typical Paimon. Hi, cuties. How about we go and chat with Jean? You didn't get a chance to say a proper hello with so many people here. Sounds good. All right, let's go. I'm so hyped for Grandmaster Varka. Yo, what's going on, Miko? Uh, uh, <laughs> hi there. Um, you must be looking for Captain Kaya? Nope. Please, don't mind me. Aw, oh, come on. Actually, I was looking for you. Oh, uh, wait, but what? Damn. Oh, jeez, Captain Kaya. Well, what should I say? Oh, my God, this kid. Yo, relax, my dude. <laughs> oh, Mika. This poor kid. How have you not changed one bit after being on the front line this long? What if he's in that situation where, like, his timidness is actually what keeps him alive like he fights in a very like i don't know what i'm doing kind of way but in turn that's what like keeps him alive he's just so uncoordinated you were just asking me about the storm terror incident weren't you well allow me to introduce you to the legendary honorary knight hell yeah bro that's right and also the legendary paimon <clears throat> I don't know about that one. Hi there. You guys are so strong. I'm... <laughs> I'm in awe. Um... I have to go and report in with Captain Eula now. Please excuse me. All right. Well, it was uh, nice seeing you for... Damn. He fucking Aww, booked it. He just left. Well, that's too bad. Uh. I was going to ask him all about the expedition. That is a pity. It really is. But don't take it the wrong way. The way he sees it, every pair of eyes in Mondstadt is focused hmm. squarely on you. Give it some time, and this will all sort itself out. Next time you see him, I'm sure you'll get along just fine. Yeah, when he's in my party. In fact, let me share a little secret with you. Try talking to him about exploring the wild. Ooh. You'll win his trust in no time. Thanks, Kaya. You have anything else to say? Well, what do you think? 
Glad you tagged along this time. Oh, yes. A little birdie told me that you'll be staying in Mondstadt for the Vine Laser Fest. Oh. Hope you enjoy yourselves. Wait a minute. A little birdie? Did my anniversary bird just freaking rat me out? All right, what about these two? Can you believe the expedition party ran into the captain of the Fatui? Huh. <sighs> That's crazy. What a relief that nothing came of it. What's there to be afraid of? The Grand Master is there. <laughs> One Grand Master should be able to take on at least, like, Ten captains. All right, buddy. I don't, I don't know about that one. Wait, forget that. You shouldn't be worrying about the expedition when you've got the Knights of Favonius Charity fundraising booth that you're supposed to be organizing. So, Damn. how's it coming along? Uh, actually, I still haven't really decided what to sell. Knights of Favonius, always so inefficient. Yo, D. Luke was on point, bro. Ah, uh, Lisa, the Grandmaster's letter is just on the table. All right. Traveler, Paimon. It's been a long time. Ooh. Apologies, I didn't get the chance to talk with you during the meeting just now. If you don't have any plans in the immediate future, why not stay in Mondstadt for a while? We'll be celebrating the Vine Lesa Fest very soon. Don't be deceived. Jean may appear very composed, but she's been missing you both terribly recently. <sighs> Lisa, <laughs> I'll leave you to catch up. I'm going to read my letter. Okay. Oh, I've missed everyone as well. Yeah, Mondstadt's where our journey began after all. We have a lot of fond memories here. True. Um, Master Jean, neither of us really knows anything about this Vine Lisa Fest. Could you tell us more about it? I, I want to say Vine Lisa Festival. That, so that might like slip out a bit, but it, it's the same thing. <laughs> yes, of course. The Vine Lisa Fest is an ancient Mondstadt festival, mm. just like Ludi Harpastum and Windbloom. Really, bro? In addition, it's the most important part of the fall. You do remember Ludi Harpastum. You're just continuing not to give it to us. And then they have the nerve to mention Windbloom like that event wasn't out like over like a year ago. Each fall, the west wind blows in Mondstadt. I hate it. Legend has it that the wonderful scent of Mondstadt's winemaking during the harvest season entices even the Animo Archon into attendance, okay. being the great wine lover that he is. So Mondstadt has three festivals now, and this one is on par with Windbloom and Ludi Harpastum, which is interesting. No matter where he is, he will transform into a soft breeze and return to his homeland. <laughs> uh, I'm sure we're going to see Venti. <sighs> On, all right. <laughs> For this reason, Mondstatters call the western wind the returning wind. Mm. The Vine Lesa Fest originally began as a celebration to welcome Lord Barbados on his return. Dragon of the East, Falcon of the West. Huh, interesting. The west wind is the returning wind. That wind represents Vanessa, no? In the past, every household would brew fresh wine around this time of year and keep it sealed at least until wind coming day during the following year's Vine Lesa Fest. Oh, geez. I don't know a thing about brewing wine, so I don't know if that's a proper way to do it. Uncasking the sealed wine is a symbolic way of inviting the Animo Archon to share a drink. Legend holds that if the Animo Archon is satisfied with the taste of the wine, he will summon a gentle breeze to richly bless the people. Damn, so this is Venti's freaking get drunk free day. As an excuse to just freaking, like, yo, put it on my tab. Knowing him, it was probably blessing them with more good wine the next year. For him to drink. That's a good question. Huh. But there's really no way of knowing. Oh, Venti. These are very old stories. Many of the details have been lost to time. Well, sus. Venti knows all about time, I'm sure. Yep, that'll happen. Some stories change completely as they get passed down. Hence why these days, Mondstatters will get into endless arguments over what kind of flower a Windbloom is. Is that because we partook in Windbloom Festival? Because, like, how would Paimon know that otherwise? Because we literally did that. Everyone and their mother was like, Quinn was like, actually, you have no idea what you're talking about. <sighs> All part of how cultural heritage is created. Mm. Indeed. But for the time being, at least, the tradition of paying tribute to the Animo Archon on Windcoming Day is still alive and well, and the Vine Lesa Fest remains a time for Mondstatters to share the joy of the harvest with one another as they partake of fine wines. I'm gonna have my appy juice with Diluc. This is a time of the year when many Mondstatters living away from Mondstadt return to their hometown. For those unable to return, Vine Lesa Fest is the period when they miss their family and friends most keenly. Aww. No wonder this is focused on Razor. He only has his wolf pack and he's out in the freaking woods. Oh, so that's why the 
Grandmaster wrote, may the wind carry our sentiments back to your side. Mm -hmm. For this year, we've joined forces with the Church of Favonius and the Adventurers Guild Ooh. to host a celebration on the banks of Cider Lake, just outside of Springvale. Okay. There will also be a traditional wine market during the festival period. Okay, cool. Wine market? Well... Originally, it About was to get simply plastered. a place where winemakers and farmers would come to trade in raw <laughs> ingredients for winemaking. These days, it is a much grander affair. Not only will you find a range of choice wines, but seasonal fruit beverages and food items for everyone to enjoy too. Nice. A lot of people also sell secondhand goods and handicrafts at the market. So I, I wonder if we're gonna get any uh, like event gadgets by the end of it. The Knights of Favonius plan to use this as an opportunity to do some fundraising for needy children and elderly people in the city. Wow, sounds pretty cool. Razor, where are you? If you have the time, I encourage you to take a look around. I hope you'll find it a worthwhile experience. Um, now, Lisa, what was the Grand Master's message to you about? Yeah, so I guess that's where we're gonna do like all of those mini games. That's probably like what the, the mini game she was explaining, but yeah. I was just about to bring that up. The Grand Master says he wants me to handle something for him. Something to do with Razor's past. Razor's lore, let's get it, dude. Razor told us that he was raised by a pack of wolves in Wolfingham. Yeah, but he had to have a mother and father. He didn't just come out of the, the ether. He never knew his parents. In his own words, the wolf pack is his lupica, which means family. Yes, that was as much as I knew as well. But in his letter, the Grand Master says that in the cabinet above the third bookshelf, to the right of the grandfather clock in Jean's office, Jesus. there's a wooden box containing some items that Razor's parents left for him. <gasps> He says, it's time to give the box to Razor. Oh my god. Does this mean the Grand Master knew Razor's parents? It would seem so. Oh my god. The Grand Master didn't simply run into Razor one day in Wolvendom and teach him how to use a sword. No, the connection between them goes back much further. Really? That's how Razor's lore made it out to be. That like he just one day, this man approached him and just presented him a sword and taught him how to fight. Let's go find Razor. Mm. He'll be pretty excited to find out something about his true parents. Uh, Lisa, something's worrying you? Oh, cutie. Nothing escapes your eyes, does it? Uh, you know me. For the child who never met their biological parents, this kind of conversation is always a difficult one. Yeah. Even for the most well-adjusted. He's not exactly adjusted in terms of, like, communicating and understanding what that means, so... By contrast, Razor grew up in Wolvendom and has had very limited contact with human society. Who knows whether he's ready for this or not? I trust Varka, though. If Varka thinks he's ready, then I trust him. I'm sure the Grand Master will have given due consideration to Razor's circumstances. Yeah. Perhaps he felt that now would be the most appropriate time. Hmm, that's a good point. Okay, cuties. Can I leave you to break the news to Razor? Aw, uh, damn. We gotta break the kid's heart? God damn it. He thinks of me as his teacher, so he might not open up to me if he gets upset. But you are his trusted friends. Mm. I think it makes more sense for him to hear about this from you. I guess, even though we haven't seen him in so long. Alright, we'll talk it out with Razor. Thank you, sweetie. Try to be as encouraging as you can. Someone his age needs all the love and support they can get. Leave it to me. As his teacher, I have a duty to give him the best education and guidance that I can. <laughs> I'll make sure I'm prepared by the time you get back. Razor has like the smartest teacher in Tevat. I think she was like the best student of the academia in the last 200 years. Go on now, cuties. I'll leave Razor in your hands. And if that's Razor's teacher, like, this man's got, like, the best education in the land. Is there something else you would like to discuss? Ooh, yes, expedition. It was good of Mika to bring the letter back all this way. Nice. Knowing that everyone is safe and sound is the best encouragement I could ask for. Still, I hadn't counted on the captain making an appearance. <laughs> the Grand Master has a rather uh, uh, unconventional way of describing things. But even then... I've never heard him give such high recognition to anyone before. Yeah, Fatui don't fuck around. If you ever encounter the captain on your own journey, be on your guard. <sighs> he is not someone to be underestimated. <laughs> I'm so excited. Is there something else you would like to discuss? Mika! Mika tells me that rather than rejoining the expedition party, 
Grandmaster told him to return to his post in Yula's mm. reconnaissance company after delivering the Ah, letter. so Mika's staying now, which I guess justifies him being a playable character now. Land surveyors are usually situated in the vanguard of an army on the move nice. and are tasked with exploring previously uncharted territory. Huh. It looks like the expedition must have entered into a much less intense phase. Mm. Have you had the chance to speak with Mika yet? When he's with people he hasn't met before, he tenses up and stands bolt upright. Yeah, I saw that already. I really wish he had a little more self-confidence. In time, I think Mika will open up to us. There is still some preparation to do, but don't worry, everything's on track. Actually, while we're on the topic, I have an assignment I'd like to give you. Namely, enjoy yourself. Please don't give me work to do. Enjoy the festival to the fullest. Thank you. Any objections? Finally. I swear to God, every other event, I'm out here like working my ass off. Yo, guess what? I got to follow orders, chat. I got to enjoy myself. Hey, look. Oh. It's a hunting trap. Hmm. It looks like the ones that the hunters from Springvale use. <sighs> Uh, shout out to all of the Genshin gamers who still have these bear traps in their inventory and never use them during Razor Story Quest. I unfortunately was not one of those people. I put all three of my traps down and to add insult to injury, not only did the pigs attack me, but none of them fell into the trap. So I wasted all of those items and I didn't catch a pig. I envy you guys, just saying. Huh? What is it? There are traces of electro energy near the trap. Electro energy? Razor? Hmm. Paimon wonders if it could be Razor. But Paimon thought he was pretty good at avoiding the hunters. Well, mm. anyway, let's follow the traces of Electro and see where they lead. Yo, Hoyaverse, let me pick up this bear trap. I'm desperate. <laughs> Damn, I just get my fucking leg caught in it like... Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. <laughs> Look, there's another trap up ahead. Another one. Yo, you who's... You Electro energy too? Oh, who the hell's uh, trying to trap Razor? The electro traces lead deep into wolving them. Let's keep going. God damn, yo, someone's literally on the hunt. Is he in the bush? All right, the last trap has been set. Oh shit. Razor, thanks for coming with me all this oh, way. Oh, it's Draft. Okay, he's actually helping with Razor. It's okay, my legs are strong. Hmm? Are they just trying to hunt like boar and stuff like that? Hopefully none of the wolves fall for it. What is it, Razor? <laughs> It smells familiar. Hmm. Friend, from far away. Oh my god, he's like a dog. He's just like, oh my god, you're back. You've been gone for thousands of years from my perception. Razor! Oh, I love the music too, the music. Oh, and it's Draft too. Are you two hunting together? Yes, it's almost harvest season and the boars are venturing into the towns and wineries looking for food. Mm. They're trampling crops and destroying the vineyards. Someone could get seriously hurt. Deluke's about to make freaking boar meat out of them then. The Knights of Favonius came to us asking for help, keeping the boars a safe distance away from the population. I and Uncle Brown Cat catch <laughs> boars, protect everyone. Uncle Brown Cat, you know what? Sure, why not? Wow, Razor, this is a big step for you. Paimon remembers you used to hide away from the hunters. Also, we found out those fucking rift hound wolves were the ones that messed with y'all. <laughs> you can say that again. Razor was the star of the show this time. Hmm. He let the wolves know we'd be coming, so we were able to get through Wolvendom without anyone getting hurt. Yo, uh, coexisting. Helping everyone, helping Lupacall, makes me happy. <sighs> but hmm. much talking. Very tired now. Hey, I'm happy for you. Yeah! But, um, Damn. actually, we came here today because we have some really important news. He's like, man, I hate talking. It's exhausting. I'm like, great, because I have some information to talk to you about. <laughs> you tell Razor about Varka's letter. Oh, I don't know. Razor, do you mean you don't want to know about your real parents? I want to know, but don't want to know. Yeah, because, like, what if they, like, died or something? Like, that's just depressing. And if they left him, like, that's tragically depressing. And if they left him, like, abandoned him, then that's sad, too, because it's like, damn, like, they didn't even want me. So, like, curiosity killed the brown cat. Like, curiosity killed the uncle brown cat. Uh, so you do want to know, but at the same time, you don't want to know? Traveler, come and take a look at the trap I just placed. 
Let's give Razor some space to process things. There you go, Giraffe. Seems like you have something to say. Uh, yes, I have some thoughts about this after seeing how Razor reacted. We've been hunting together a lot recently. The kid might not talk much, but still, I feel like I've come to understand him a little over the time we've spent together. Aw, you know, Giraffe's the homie for this. Here's what I think. He definitely wants to find out about his parents. It's just that his fear of the unknown is overwhelming everything else he's feeling. I'm a father myself, so I know a thing or two about kids. <laughs> Diano, by the way. You know, when Diana was little, if I got back late from a hunt one night, Aww. she'd be watching me like a hawk for days afterwards, as if she was worried that I might abandon her. That's so cute. Do you mean... Razor's worried that he was abandoned by his own parents? Yeah, that's that's the first thing I thought of. Exactly. I think that's the heart of it. And if it turns out they did, well, I don't think there's anything we could say to console him. That's not my only concern, though. What if they died? Razor is developing at his own pace. There are lots of issues that can't be solved all in one go, but he's making progress, one step at a time. But now this thing with his parents is added into the mix. It might push him to want to figure out once and for all where he comes from and where he's going. Seems like a similar take to Lisa's. Mm. Hmm. Maybe all mature adults think like this, huh? Wait, but then again, Master Jean had a different view. She said it's more about trusting other people and in your own instincts. Oh, what do you think? Ah, uh, I will be there for him as a friend through this. I like that. Gotcha. I don't want to force well, anything on knowing him. Knowing that he's got a friend like you to rely on makes me feel much better about this whole thing. Paimon, how about this? You tell Paimon about how you plan to approach the situation. Okay, got it. Right, let's head back. We don't want to keep him waiting. Hey, Razor, so what are your thoughts? Still thinking. Hmm. My heart, it feels strange. Aww. Like being stabbed by a wolf hook. What do you think of Varka? Varka? Hmm. Tall. Very strong. Likes to laugh. Then do you trust Varka? Yes. Trust. He's very good to me. Give me a name. Teach me to fight. Yeah, he gave him his name too. Now, busy with important work. Aww. I miss him. I miss him too and I've never met the guy. <laughs> you know, Razor, Varka used up all the paper writing this letter, but he still made sure he found room on the back to add a note for Lisa. Mm -hmm. He specifically told her to give you the things that your parents left for you. That means that he thinks the items have a special meaning for you. But more importantly than that, whatever happens, the Traveler, Paimon, Lisa, and all your other friends will always be here for you. I love Paimon for this too. Holy moly. Don't worry, everything will be fine. That's right. And old Uncle Brown Cat's here to support you as well. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I decide... I want to go with you. To see Teacher. <laughs> Let's go. That's the spirit, kiddo. Well, you folks better be heading off then. I'm just about finished here, so I'll be heading home very shortly myself. <sighs> I'd better try and get plenty of father-daughter time in before the, uh, <laughs> fine laser fest starts. <laughs> oh, Diona's gonna be pissed, bro. Diona probably hates this time of the year. She's like, my fucking father and all these drunkards are gonna get wasted. Bye, Draft. See you again next time. Go back to the Grandmaster's office. All right, let's do it. I'm back. Lisa, we brought Razor. Hello, teacher. I'm here. To see the box. What's in the box? Ah, oh, my little wolf cub's in a good mood. Aww. I'm assuming they've discussed the whole story with you already? Here, this is it. Holy the moly. box. I haven't touched it, except for taking it out of the cabinet. When you're sure you're ready, you can open it yourself. Oh, well, that's a big box right there. That's like a magnificent chest. Yes, I am sure. Ooh. Oh, <gasps> this is just Aww. a pile of junk. Whoa! I thought there'd at least be a letter or something. Paimon, that's kind of fucked up. A pile of ju- Fuck you, Paimon. How's that? Don't say that in front of him. Okay, that's like a wolf cap. That looks kind of cool. That's like a nice little commemorative item. Maybe like a gadget, if you will. Is that like a piece of a ruin guard? Because uh, that reminds me of a Karkata, like collecting the little ruin pieces for Abatui. Uh, some string, a couple screws, and then a bottle with a note on it. Uh-oh. You don't think that, after all this time, Varka might be getting mixed up between
between different boxes. Oh, Paimon, go wait outside. <laughs> Can't take you anywhere. There is a scent. Okay. A scent? What kind? A scent I remember from a long, long time ago. <gasps> it's their scent. That little wolf cap looks so cute. Is that a hat? I don't know if that's supposed to be a hat or something. Human scent. Father and mother scent. Aww. Oh, incredible. You still remember scents from all the way back in your childhood. Wow. You have a really good sense of smell, Razor. Guess being wild by nature has its advantages. Oh, let's see what other leads we can find. This woolen hand puppet. Oh, it's a hand puppet. Monkey. Okay. Guess it must be handmade, huh? Yeah. Is this a part from a ruin guard? Yeah, I was thinking that. It looks like a ruin machine Wait. thing. Hey, look. This wine bottle is still half full. Hey, you know what they say. Wine gets better with age, so that's good. And there's a note stuck on it. Thousand. Uh, uh -oh. thousand wind wine. Wait a minute. Hold on, bro. What the fuck? Was this wine crafted from the hands of Istaroth herself? What is this? Oh, so it's a bottle of thousand wind wine? Teacher. You know? Oh, where's Venti when you need him, bro? Of course. Thousand Wind Wine was the first kind of wine that Mondstadters ever learned to make. Or so they say. Oh, damn. That's the OG wine. As to how it got its name, some say it's a reference to the numerous ingredients used to make it. While others say it's because every bottle tastes slightly different. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and say it's because the god of time created the wine and then named it after herself. I remember reading somewhere that there are all sorts of weird and wonderful ways of brewing it. And that it's very difficult to ensure it comes out tasting the same each time. Some Istaroth sussery going on. This all makes it impractical to commercialize. Wine merchants are much more comfortable working with reliable, consistent tasting products. That's why you'll almost never see Thousand Win wine in the markets or taverns. Venti probably knows about it too. Huh. In fact, it looks like your parents brewed this bottle themselves. Holy shit, chat! Razor's parents are the gods of time! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm coping so hard right now. <laughs> that must mean there's something pretty important uh... about it. <gasps> oh, Paimon has an idea. Razor, you got a good nose. Why don't you open it up and take a whiff? Maybe it'll tell you something. Take a sip, all right? You're old enough, right? We'll turn a blind eye. Okay. Let's see. Bottoms up, my boy. <laughs> huh. He seems really in the zone. And... Is that a smile? Aw, do you have like a fond memory? Find anything? Sweet, cold, a little bitter. I like many things all mixed together. Ugh, but things in wine smell different. Wine ages over time, so that's probably why. Even you can't tell what it is, Razor? I will try again. <sighs> Come on, buddy, you can do this. It's okay, Razor. Don't push yourself too hard. Hmm. What do we do when we try something and it doesn't work? Try another way. That's right. You still remember what I taught you. Teacher student moment. Oh, it's almost the Vine Lisa Fest. Everyone who knows anything worth knowing about wine will be gathering in Mondstadt. Hmm. Surely someone will know a thing or two about Thousand Win Wine. Just wait till Venti gets here and then we can question him on why he's dodging us to ask about Conria. I'm not letting him get away with it this time, okay? I've had enough. Oh, great idea! Well, Vent. I love that me and the game are on the same wavelength. Will Venti be coming? I have a few questions to ask him. Make sure you don't miss the opening ceremony, cutie. Everyone will be there. Everyone. Razor, you should go too. It'll be a good opportunity to ask around. Okay. Ask many people. I will try. All right, let's get Don't it. Don't worry. We'll be right there with you. We can be your go-betweens. You know, hmm. like you were with the wolves for draft. Interesting comparison. We'll be there for you, just like we promised. Okay. Then I will go back now. I need to tell Lupacall about human mother and human father. Great! See you at the opening ceremony! Wait for the Vinlesa Festival in two days. As Razor's teacher, I'm so happy to see him taking this first step. And you must be tired from running around trying to find <laughs> Razor. Why don't you rest here a while? 
I'll make you a nice cup of tea. Ooh. I'm about to big chill with Lisa for the next two days in Jean's office with just her and me for the next two days, okay? Sheesh. Whoa, balloons. Whoa, hold on. There's decorating? Whoa, wait, are those different too? I just realized the fucking, the sails are different. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, those are too. Bro, I did not realize that. Holy shit. Oh, wow. They did some, uh, they did like kind of like minimal. Okay, this is kind of cool. <laughs> all right, I didn't notice that this was all over the city. Oh, this is nice. I appreciate this so much. Yeah, because they did this for the Windbloom Festival. They had like the dandelions all around the city and like they fucking rolled out the carpets and added a bunch of flowers to the streets. So I was not expecting them to, you know, have a little fanfare like this. I like this a lot. Oh, look at this. Even Springvale's freaking... Oh, wow, this is so cool, man. The entire place is just lit up with festivities. Just like Lantern Right in a way. Like Lantern Right also kind of goes above and beyond. Temporary bartender for the cat's tail. Sorry, but Diano will be on leave for the duration of the festival. Oh, you're not here to see Diana? That's rare. Diana and Margaret aren't here. Miss Diana's mood tends to be sour when Wine Lisa comes around. So Miss Margaret gave her some time off, but that's understandable. After all, the number of booze hounds at the wine festival at the wine market far exceeds that that you might find at the tavern as for miss margaret she certainly wouldn't pass up on the festivities just to run the business she's probably off somewhere drinking and having a good time as we speak but yeah i said that too i was like damn diona's gonna be heated bro she hates wine and alcohol of all kinds so um and i just realized something too you have diane and diona like they both work for the bartender for the cat's tail i, I don't know if it's because the names are similar or, or what but I, I noticed that too. Thank you everyone for your patience. I am pleased to announce that this year's Vinlesa Fest has officially begun. Woohoo! We hope the residents of Mondstadt and visitors from all over will enjoy the magnificent wines and experience the joy of the harvest. I want those balloons for my teapot, by the way. When wind coming day arrives, we will hold a grand toasting ceremony to welcome the Animo Archon Barbados back home. Let the wind lead. Oh, I, oh, there's Venti. Holy shit, he's already here. He's big chilling. Let, Let the, the wind, wind lead. lead. Let the wind lead. Razor, you're here already. <sighs> so many people. Come on, let's sneak out of here. There's <laughs> someone we gotta find. Find? Oh, Venti. Just some tone deaf bard. Uh, but he's also a know it all and loves <laughs> nothing more than drinking, so he might actually be able to help. <laughs> Intensifies. <laughs> hey, tone deaf bard! You got some explaining to do. Where were you 500 years ago? <laughs> it's been a while. Yeah, Iridori Festival, a couple patches. Traveler, Paimon, how do you do? Oh. <laughs> I had a feeling I'd run into you soon during this most enchanting of festivals. Oh, I miss it. I love Erica so much. I love whenever she's able to perform with Venti. Spoken like a true poet. <laughs> hmm. But reading between the lines here, if one bottle is tipsy and two is merry, just how many is enchanting exactly? <laughs> oh, don't say that. This festival has so much more to offer than just drinking. Anyway, hey, Razor. How have you been? All right. I have a question. Yeah, Razor has something he wants to ask you about. Thousand Winds. You know about Thousand Wind Wine? Yeah, ring any bells? Bring up any memories or people you might know or moments in, of time? Ooh, now there's a name that takes me back. <laughs> Let me think. How long has it been since I last heard someone mention Thousand Win Wine? Maybe a uh, thousand years ago? Razor's parents left him a box with a half bottle of wine inside, and there's a label on it that says Thousand Win Wine. We heard there's a lot of history behind this type of wine, and the brewing methods go way, way back. So we figured you'd be a good person to ask. Mm. It smells good, but don't know what's inside. I see, I see. So you want to know how Thousand Wind Wine is made? Well, you came to the right person. Mm. I happen to know a little rhyme called... Well, 
as it happens, Thousand Wind Wine. It should have been Thousand Wind Rhyme because it would be really close with Thousand Wind Wine and he knows a little rhyme that happens to be called Thousand Wind Rhyme. Come on, guys. These fucking jokes don't write themselves, okay? I was going to save it for Wind Coming Day, but far be it from me to deny an early serenade to a friend in need. <laughs> How about it? Shall I recite it for you? I'm channeling my inner Sino a little too much. A song, not easy to understand, but <laughs> still one to hear. Excellent answer. Then, uh, hear it you shall. Oh, are we gonna get an animation? Fill up the barrels and oh. store them away. Okay. Then wait, wait for a windier day. Wax the bottles, seal them tight, for the south, south wind, wind that sues, for the north wind, wind that bites. bites. Yeah, this was from the, the trailer. How does this fine wine taste to the tongue? As Mondstadt to the ear, like a sweet dream of freedom. <laughs> and what are the fruits that went into the brew? An explorer's courage, a love tender and true. Yo, bars, let's go! A defender's will, strong as yesteryear. Joining the thousand winds in a song of good cheer. <laughs> Turning sour into sweet, Bitter notes fade away as we wait, wait for a windier day. Bro, what the fuck? That is so good. This is such a good poem. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for the applause. Uh, was the rhyme of help to you? I was just captivated by how well it was put together. Like wine, a little sweet, but now head spinning. Don't understand. Don't worry, it's not just you. That was supposed to be about winemaking, but it didn't give a single detail about the process. I feel like Fenty just low-key just spoiled the entire game with that verse. We just have to go back and dissect every single line of meaning out of it to just figure out what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> well, maybe it's a little abstract and romanticized, mm -hmm. but that's one of the defining features of Mondstadt poetry. Okay, so let's try to pin this down. What did the poem say the ingredients are? Um... Tender love and something else? An explorer's courage. Yeah. A love tender and true. A defender's will and... The thousand winds? Song of good cheer? Where can I find these? Nope. Paimon has absolutely no idea what any of these refer to. Paimon's all out of brain juice. Look, Tone Deaf Bard, you clearly know what the whole thing means, so could you do us a favor and at least give us a hint? Come on, Venti. For old time's sake, I still need to interrogate you. You misunderstand me. I'm not trying to make you work for it or anything, but the lyrics are what they are. If there's anything they left out, even I can't fill in the blanks. Mm-hmm. If you want to know the secret behind this sweet scent, you might have to start by rolling up your sleeves. Oh, come on, bruh. Rolling up our sleeves? You mean <laughs> we need to go and make this wine for ourselves? But I don't have and sleeves. Somehow, that'll teach us everything <laughs> we want to know? Uh, this better not be a prank. We've known each other for so long, and you still don't trust my intentions? Oh, oh, the pain. Paid actor right here, ladies and gentlemen. Actually paid actor. I trust. I want to try. I want to make wine and find answers. Oh, shit. Yo, Razor exclusive wine? Let's go. If I know how to make wine, then I know what is in father and mother's wine. Oh, were they winemakers, maybe? By reliving their actions, maybe we will understand what kind of people they were. Right. Okay, I like this. I like where this is going. I want to know about them. Well, if you say so, Razor, guess we'll have to take Tone Deaf Bard's word on this one. We'll give it a try. And as first-time winemakers, there's no shame if it turns out bad. Yeah, I mean, doesn't wine take a really long time to make? Like, how long is this shit gonna go for? Don't worry, really. Freedom is the key here. It's not as hard as you might think. Damn, chat. R.I.P. to OG Rosaria outfit. We hardly knew ye. As long as you add ingredients to the mix in a spirit of joy and sincerity, I promise you will reap the rewards you wish for. I will tell Poem to teach her. Freaking ten-head teacher will probably figure it out. Then... I need to think alone. It's okay, Razor. Take all the time you need, my boy. That's the spirit. So, how about we meet again in two days? Let's say, same place right here? Uh, two IRL days, they say, because I guess each act was like two days apart from the next one coming out, so that makes sense. Okay. 
I will remember. See you then. All right, Razor, take care of yourself, buddy. I love you. We're gonna figure this out together, I promise. Uh, sounds from afar. Ooh. Oh my God. That was a beautiful fucking art page. I need to find that in its like full glory. Autumn Crisis, High Wind Trail. Okay, so these I think are the, the mini games. Uh, I'm gonna talk to Venti real quick. All right, so. Ah, uh, good. I was hoping we might get to chat some more. Ooh, same. Okay, tell me what you know about Conria. Stop dodging the question. What are your thoughts on the Vine Lace Fest? I am fond of each and every one of Mondstadt's festivals. But if I'm honest, <laughs> Vine Laser Fest has an extra special place in my heart. I wonder why. You got a free a free pass to drink. You know, the Animo Archon goes into a slumber after the west wind dies down, mm. leaving the north wind to blow during the winter. That's interesting, right? Because, like, Andreas is the north, and uh, wasn't this place, like, ice before when he originally, like, resided over Mondstadt? Which means... This festival is the big feast before the winter slumber. About Razor. I wouldn't worry yourself too much about him. Staying true to their journey and discovering joy and freedom for themselves is what Mondstatters do best. Freedom, America. The same goes for you. You have to find the thing that makes you happy. <laughs> Mostly because your happiness is very important to me. That's sweet. All right, Venti. See you around. Remember, there's no rush. Take your time, and you'll find all the answers that you're looking for. I hope you're right. Uh, I'm still looking for those answers from Conria, you son of a bitch! Wait! Honorary Knight! And Paimon? The best guide into that. I humbly beg for your assistance. Is this one of the quests? Wow! Did Paimon hear that right? Is Paimon finally starting to make a name for herself? <laughs> Damn. Oh, wait. Haven't we met? In the Hall of the Knights of Favonia's headquarters. That's right. I'm Bernhard, a member of the logistics company under Captain Hertha. Normally, I would hope to become better acquainted before asking for a favor like this, but time's running out, so I really have no choice. Please help me rescue the charity event. Oh, the books? What's going on? Rescue. The charity event? Oh, right! Master Jean mentioned that. So, what's happened? Well, the Knights of Favonius wants to run a stall during the festival. Yeah, I see you have it up already. The idea is for all profits from the sales to go to charity. Ooh. Specifically, the funds will provide support to disadvantaged children and elderly citizens. Who's that over there? The lady wearing like that entire getup. She, I didn't see her there before, I don't think. We drew lots to decide whose job it would be, and as it happened, I was the lucky winner. <laughs> I really didn't want to screw lucky. this up, so I asked all around for advice, but my experience is in inventory and shipping. Now I'm supposed to run a whole shop, but it took me forever just to think of what to sell. I'm already completely out of my depth. Well, you're selling books, no? And that is why I humbly beseech you to render your assistance. Everyone has things that they struggle with. Uh, I understand. Yeah! Also, no need to be so formal. So, you said this is to help out the kids and old folks of Mondstadt, right? Sounds like a great cause! He's an honorary knight, and Paimon's a longtime friend of Favonius! We'll be more than happy to do our part! What do you need from us? Oh, I can't thank you enough. Right, let me get down to brass tacks. Before we can open shop, we need to amass a supply of fair brew jellies. This oh. is the basic currency that we will use when running the stall. I guess there's multiple stalls for the charity. I guess the book one was just a different person. I thought it was the same one. Uh, the wine merchants in the area are in dire need of raw ingredients for winemaking. Sell them raw ingredients and they will pay you generously in fair brew jellies. Ooh, okay. Also, there are some international customers looking to purchase beverages in bulk during the Vine Lace Fest period. I have all the resources. The for an agent to handle their purchase orders. In the interest of establishing a long-term business relationship, these customers are usually willing to offer a generous price. And there's also room for negotiation with the wine merchants. The price difference is ours to keep as commission. And you can cash that amount in for fair brew jellies. So to sell up. Our job is to sell ingredients, sell ingredients to the wine merchants and place orders for the international customers, making sure to negotiate the price, right? Huh. Sounds much easier than Paimon imagined. We're pretty good at this. R really? <laughs> well, that's wonderful. I have one order here with me already. Uh, Mr. Shavir May from Sumeru wishes to purchase 50 crates of fruits of the festival. Sheesh, 50? I, I just bought two. These beverages Individual. can be from the Angel's share stand. Uh, the shopkeeper's name is Georg. Georg? I thought it was George. 
he's a very nice man, but he won't be pushed around. Please, consider the price carefully and try to reach a good deal with Georg. I'm calling him George, I don't give a damn. I should carry on setting up the stall now. Once you've gathered enough fair brew jellies, come back here and we'll take it from there. You won't need to worry about supplies for the shop. Okay. I'm already in contact with the suppliers and they'll send everything over once the funds are in place. Alright, sounds good! We'll find the funds and you sort out the shop! Seems pretty reasonable. This is an enormous help. Thank you both ever so much. The funds processed by the shop owner, Shaverm. The fair brew jellies within is meant to be used to purchase 50 boxes of fruit of the festival from Angel Share. They look like little gem crystal things that you find in like Liyue. Oh, Annette. Hello. Hello and welcome to Vine Lisa. May Lord Barbados bless you. Hey, Murder of Birds, look, there's a, a notice board here with a whole bunch of papers pinned to it. Is this a commission board or something? <laughs> no, they're not commissions. They're the clues for finding second hampers. What's that? Is that some sort of treasure? It's one way to look at it. It seems this is your first time participating in the festival. Would you like me to give a brief explanation? Well, since Paimon's so interested, go ahead. All right, simply put, a fecund hamper is a gift prepared by residents for lucky outsiders during the festival. We aren't just welcoming the return of Lord Barbados, but also means to share the joy of harvest and reminisce about good times. Everyone will put a gift in a wooden box shaped with a barrel and hiding it in places that hold memories to them. Next, the owner of the gift will leave clues. The first person, no matter who, to find the gift. Oh, so it's kind of like a, like a scavenger hunt. Other than gifts, everyone will also leave a message in the box to the person who finds it. This is a sincere blessing, one more valuable than the gift itself. This sounds pretty fun. So, would you two like to try looking for a fecund hamper? You should be able to work the clues easily if you use knowledge from Monst of Monstat Customs. Let's try. We may even find a gift for someone we know. Good luck and have fun. Wow, a lot of little uh, mini games. In fecund blessing, follow the clues on the gift notes to find the various scattering fecund hampers. Open them to receive the well wishes of Monstat citizenry and their excellent prepared gifts. Oh, this is neat. Happy Vine Lisa. I placed my gift near the stage of the wine market. I hope that this gift will make the day of the person who finds it. Over here? Ah, yeah, right here. Pog. Yo. Oh, it was Barbara. Oh, this is so nice. Are you enjoying yourself at Vine Lisa? Every time a festival comes around, the roads and streets are lined up with all sorts of decorations and conversation people have with one another glow lighthearted. They talk about how they are spending the holiday, what they'll buy. Their happiness is truly infectious. This harvest festival, I'd like to send you some small flag that I made myself. If it can be used as decorations to liven up your day, that would be great. Barbara. Wow. That's so cool. And uh, I got a furnishing, right? I, I guess I'm going to get like a bunch of these furnishings. From Maybe I will get the balloon after all then. So we might get some of the furnishings that are showcased throughout this festival. That's so cool, man. Overall, that was actually one that was uh, a really good introduction it was great to just be back in Mondstadt see familiar faces again slowly build into like understanding Razor's parents and they could have been winemakers which I am leading to believe that that might have been the case learning about Grandmaster Varka's expedition the fact that he seemingly is traveling into the territory of Snezhnaya especially since he came across one of the Fatui Harbingers being Capitano. Unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to see him for seemingly two years. You know, it seems like we're gonna be dealing with Scott and Dotorian, Sumeru, another Fatui Harbinger in Fontaine, and then Capitano will most likely be who we deal with in Natlin when we get to that region. Mika is pretty cool from the dialogue that we read, from the dialogue that we heard of the characters to his introduction, his mannerisms, his design, and the fact that he's like, I guess he's permanently back in Mondstadt. I'm I'm expecting him to be a four star character in the next couple patches but yeah this seems to be like a pretty well put together festival overall we have world quest we have mini games we have a bunch of rewards pretty sure we're gonna be seeing d luke too since this is a wine oriented event rosaria made a quick cameo i don't know what that was all about that was kind of sus but yeah overall i'm really enjoying this this is the end of act one i'm gonna be starting up act two tomorrow so i hope you guys look forward to the content i appreciate all of you guys who tuned in live to watch this and uh yeah We'll jump into more of it tomorrow.